The title of this presentation is From Random Vertex, Vertex Geometries to Ashkin Teller Random Geometries. To begin with a presentation overview, we'll be introducing the six vertex model, which is a particular class of vertex models, which under different types of boundary conditions or different assumptions on the parameters, which are given as weights as the model can exhibit very favorable integrability properties or other types of properties like logarithmic delocalization of the height function. And as we're going to describe and be able to connect this type of model with several other models of interest, it's given by six possible configurations which belong in the sample space. And the orientation, which is of the arrow that the height function crosses depends on whether the height function increases its height by one or decreases it by one. And we'll be making use of this model so that we can describe in further detail properties of symmetric domains and random geometry of the Ashkin Teller model over strips of the square lattice. And some of this does overlap a little bit with um, a more broad overview that I gave on how weak and crossing probability estimates can be obtained for the Ashkin Teller model. But I didn't describe several types of characteristics and how it relates really to the overarching qual qualities and characteristics of random geometry that are given in the sample space for this probability measure and how that can relate to um, other types of models and how some of those uh, some more of those connections can be phrased mo more coherently now in terms of um, just some presentations and materials I gave um, from a previous uh, 15 videos on the channel, which was a series on the 20 vertex model and very much how that type of model, it really exposes us to connections of several different types of models and statistical mechanics and what type of universality notions could we take away from all of these models at the same time. So we're going to, as we had alluded to, introduce several properties of symmetric domains that are bridged with good probability. And this relates to many of the types of symmetric domains that one looks for like other models or more simple um, simple pursuits of a russo seymour welsh arguments, such as the high temperature expansion of the loop on model. And these symmetric domains are characterized by the fact that we can think about how are the left and right boundaries of such domains embedded within the square lattice and it can also be related to thinking about some potential difficulties in being able to carry over um, some arguments that were developed in um, the logarithmic delocalization of the height function paper by Dumino Copan, uh, Manolesco, Carrilla, and Ulamara, in which they were talking, they were able to establish several associations for the free energy uh, landscape of the six vertex model and how that in that case, the conclusions that they're able to gather for the six vertex model, it won't really be able to transfer over to some type of very um, solid or clear interpretation of the free energy of the Ashkin Teller model over the cylinder, which is going to relate to some properties um, from Russo Simmer Walsh that the marginalized Ashkin Teller measure uh, doesn't satisfy. And as what's given in the last bullet point, we can also think about what. Um, conditions from the interpretation of the free energy of the six vertex model could be maybe studied or applied in the future or look at some aspects of the free energy of the Ashkin Teller model um, and its associated free energy landscape and also how that could be related to a model that was introduced in a 1997 paper which is uh, called the generalized random cluster model or the random cluster representation of the Ashkin Teller model. And uh, the preprint reference is going to include some facts that um, and some arguments from um, this preprint that was first uh, given that I first uh, sent to the archive in uh, November 2022. And um, I edited it a bit um, from a second version just to reorganize some things and um, add further details in the exposition so that it, the beginning of the paper and the overview is a bit more spelled out and easier to follow. And it's talking about how some russo seymour welsh arguments for the logarithmic delocalization of the height function can also be carried over from flat to salt boundary conditions. And on top of the difference of the boundary conditions, which is which is factored into the crossing probability estimates, there's also some type of other um, version of this argument over strips of the square lattice that can be looked at for the Ashkin Teller model and the generalized random cluster model, which is obtained um, by uh, taking a product of four percolation bond measures to obtain some overall probability measure over the bonds of this of the square lattice Z2 um, is discussed in another presentation on the channel, but I won't be discussing it today. But uh, that's pretty much like how you can think about it. And it's related to the Ashkin Teller model, not only because 
conveniently it's the interactions of the model are defined on the square lattice so it's the same lattice that we're defining the ash teller model on but it's also very helpful because um it's relating to uh to uh to a similar choice of parameters that were used to map from the six vertex to the ash teller model along the self-dual line of the ash teller model and then there's even another type of model that um, it's obviously even more obscure, but some type of cubic spin model that can be related to the generalized random cluster model because there's some type of Hamiltonian representation for the interactions in the spin cubic model, uh, which is related to some compl complexification um, and adding on additional interaction terms from uh, the from various objects and interactions which are defined for over the bonds of the square lattice uh, with the generalized random cluster model. So, which is to say that you can look at, you know, more, which could be a more interest in for more, for, uh, you know, determining other, whether other types of notions of universality exist, you know, maybe within KPZ or outside of KPZ, how, um, how these models and looking at different modifications or degenerations of the parameters could generate a whole flow chart of models that one could investigate. And um, this is also related to the fact that, you know, it's also of interest to determine whether any of these types of notions can be carried over for the height function representation of the 20 vertex model. So even though, like we had alluded to in the beginning slide for the overview of this short talk that, um, you know, we were interested in the six vertex model, another type of degeneration or looking at you know, in this case, it's actually not really degeneration because it's increasing the sample space. So it's very much, in, you know, increasing um, the complexity of the sample space because you can you can obtain several other types of uh, configurations of arrows, which are either pointing inwards or outwards of each one of the vertices of the triangular lattice. And um, a lot of the focus, um, which was, which still is a bit separate from the geometric perspective that I'm going to emphasize in this presentation is that the three-dimensional L operator, um, it can be comprised of several uh, different components, which I described more in the presentations in that, in that series of 15 videos. And it's just relating a lot to how we can look at different classes of vertex models or even higher spin six vertex models, which can help us determine what types of notions of integrability would hold, which in the case of the 20 vertex model, it's a very much a weaker notion uh, that one can obtain from what I describe as the Poisson structure and how that relates to the study of PDEs and well-posedness for conditions uh, for like PDEs that are relating to wave wave propagation, like I described with the Kamasa home PDE. And um, as we mentioned, we can introduce the six vertex model, just like how we had alluded to um, in the first slide, which is given by the fact that the sample space consists of six possible configurations and the orientation of the arrow that the height function crosses depends on whether it goes up or down by one when it crosses one face at a time. Informally, it's given as a mapping as a as a as a face as a face homomorphism from the faces of the torus into the integers. Given as we have mentioned, the stipulation that the absolute value of the difference of the height function for these two neighboring points x and y only differs by one for these faces on the torus. And the torus comes into play because even though the crossing probability estimates in the original work in the first work for Russo Simo Welsh for flats for flat boundary conditions was obtained for um for the strips of the square lattice you map into the faces of the torus because uh because that's the that's the setting over which you establish the logarithmic delocalization result before um transitioning back to uh to um to show that logarithmic delocalization holds um over over the uh over the final environment and uh, we can express the weight of the six vertex model given by the fact that it can be given as a product of A terms, B terms, and C terms. And under an isotropic parameter choice, we can project these two coefficients to single weight, uh, B1 and B2 to a single weight, as well as C1 and C2 to a single weight. And we can obtain a probability measure by normalizing by the partition function of the torus. And um, as we had as we had uh, described, um, there can even be aspects of random geometry that we're going to get to and describe from the 
properties of the Ashkin Teller matter measure, which is uh, studied in a very recent paper that's very interesting and establishes connections with 19 vertex model and several other types of vertex models that's due to Glasman and Paled. In the sample space of this lower rank spin chain, it can also be very interesting to encode open boundary conditions, which are a set of admissible conditions under which you can form some types of um, conformal field field theory um, interpretations uh, with regards to um, a statement of the beta equations and looking at the roots of the beta equations when you tune different parameters and the Hamiltonian differently in this spin model, which can be related to another mapping or another equivalence of a model from the six vertex model. So it's just emphasizing how even maybe you have some type of geometric interpretation, like how we're going to emphasize further, which is coming into the into play with the six vertex model that um it's relating to that preprint that I mentioned at the beginning, the first version of which was available on November, 2022. And um yeah, and then from this, it's relating to the fact that um we can still make further use of this primarily geometric, this random geometric viewpoint and perspective and how that can help us look at different types of conditions of uh, other models and the config, the, like the behavior of the typical configuration that we could sample from all of the micro configurations that um, exist as options within the sample space. And uh, like we had alluded to, um, we can just keep in mind one fro frozen boundary configuration with the six vertex model and uh, how it appears, like how I had mentioned from that work um, from as one of my figures and how it highlights some characteristics of how uh, how the freezing of the height function within strips of the square lattice, it can make um, the arguments for weak and crossing probability estimates much more difficult. And it primarily relates to the fact is that from this figure that we have on the left hand side, we can break down some individual components and describe it in which it's just um, one of the figures that I've made as a typical configuration, which can highlight difficulties of the freezing of the height function within the six vertex model, because if we're looking at a crossing event that's that's um, within the bottom most and the top most boundary that are given of the strip, then what can happen is that if the height function freezes, that could prevent um, the height function from being made from staying within the uh, within these top two boundaries uh, for very long, um, because the whole point of the russo samuel walsh estimates um, in the first environment of over strips of the square lattice over flat boundary conditions due to Dumino, Kapan, Kurila, um, Dumino, Kapan, Manolasco, Kurila, and Ulamara is due to the fact that um, they're able to guarantee that this crossing probability is maintained and that um, within a very long strip, so as you take the infinite volume limit in this direction, as well as from the fact that um, it doesn't, there, there is very small probability crossing there's very small probability that there exists a crossing from the bottommost strip to the topmost boundary of the strip. So it's very much demonstrating how um, some other more extreme characteristics of the random geometry of the six vertex model come into play from the open questions that they raise with respect to the frozen boundary conditions, namely, um, you know, the types of frozen boundary conditions such that if you take a boundary condition that has a slope, where the slope is 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 associated with the height function of the six vertex model is just taking the points x and y and subtracting the height function from at these two points from each other and normalizing by the length of one degree freedom of the finite volume. This is given by the fact that you can obtain some types of very pathological and difficult to deal with configurations for the six vertex model um, when you take um, the, the slope of the height function to lie within a very specific uh, boundary of irrational numbers, namely uh, the Cartesian product of the closed interval from minus one to one with itself. But if we if we restrict our choice of the of the um, of the um, of the boundary conditions of the height function to lie within the interior of the set, then um, there's not there's not pro positive probability that the configuration from the six vertex model that we would sample would be would only consist of frozen faces, which would not allow us to carry over uh, the Russo Seymour Welsh in aspects of the crossing probability estimates. Uh, from the flat boundary condition. So we're able to maintain these two types of characteristics. And it's very much relating to the fact that 
this, as we had mentioned, this type of uh, geometry, uh, random geometry that we're trying to uh, study and further characterize from the six vertex model under these different boundary conditions in the first environment over strips of the square lattice is, um, can, as we had mentioned, it's relating to um, another type of model, whether it be the lower or higher rank spin chain and how open boundary conditions can be enforced in the spin chain, which is very much having a sample space that's consisting of 38 possible configurations. And from um, from the reference in another shorter presentation that I have on the channel, uh, I described um, the reference um, that I reproduced uh, the sample space from and how that relates to defining an expression for a local Hamiltonian, which is uh, which is related to the computation of the logarithmic derivative of the transfer matrix. And um, this is even related to the next to the next reference from Dumino Copan and several co-authors, co which I'm going to uh, provide as another reference in the presentation because this is the conjectured phase diagram of the six vertex model. And this is given by the fact that we look at one axis as plotting A over C and the other axis as plotting B over C. And uh, when you look at these parameters, given a disorder parameter, um, which um, I think maybe I'll define later in the presentation, or I can just mention it as it's given by disorder parameter that's equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared divided by 2AB. Um, there can exist a partition of the phase space of the six vertex model into these conjectured regions, depending upon uh, you know whether the six vertex model exhibits a uh, ferroelectric or anti-ferroelectric behaviors. And this is the reference that I mentioned due to Dumido Copan and several co-authors in which Kozlowski and several co-authors and Manulescu and um, others, in which they characterize the free energy function of the six vertex model. So recall from a previous slide when we introduced the six vertex model that uh, there exists these isotropic choice of parameters, which they use to define the free energy as little a, little b, and little c respectively. And they take the limit as big N goes to infinity as is, and as big N goes to infinity. And they're looking at the logarithmic of the partition function of the six vertex model over the torus uh, with these three isotropic parameters. And as we had mentioned from this reference, given this disorder parameter, um, sorry, I forgot that um, it was gonna show up here, but um, this is the disorder parameter like we had mentioned uh, and used to describe uh, the partitions of the phase space that were given for the six vertex model. They establish a very specific relation between the, the three isotropic weights, A, B, and C, which appear the six vertex model, as well as how this can relate to parameterization and range of parameters for this disorder parameter. So it's basically saying that if you can choose some parameter C, um, which is relating to this disorder parameter, so we can look at some some the some weights uh, which from the the disorder parameter can satisfy this range of parameters be, between minus one and one, um, non inclusive. Uh, there exists some types of expressions for the weights based upon a uh, hyperbolic sign or sines or cosines. And there can also exist another value of interest for the disorder parameter, which is given by being equal to minus one, because under a different choice of parameters, A, B, and C, the three isotropic weights of the six vertex model take a bit simpler of a form in which it's either a rational function of uh, pi, pi and theta or even a constant function altogether. And then finally, for the last region for delta being the disorder parameter being stri strictly less than minus one, um, given um, a similar in introduction of a parameterization of in, with hyperbolic cosine, um, they establish um, the existence of equality between the three isotropic weights of the six vertex model, um, like what was given in the first case, with the exception that there's a hyperbolic sines appearing and a hyperbolic cosine appearing instead of just sine and cosine. And like we had mentioned and alluded to, this is the expected phase diagram in which it's very much of interest even in another paper from um, even people in computer science, which have a very combinatoric centered interpretation of the six vertex model, whether there can be any types of arguments for mixing or other behaviors of the six vertex model that would hold maybe in the ferroelectric or anti-ferroelectric region, but would completely break down uh, when going to another region of the phase diagram, which is very much interesting to look at those bordering cases uh, from, from these values of the disorder parameter and uh, how uh, these points within the partition of the phase space uh, would relate to each other.
And um, there are properties that the six vertex probability measure satisfies because uh, we have FKG and SMP properties standing for respectively Fortune, Kestel, and Ganebra and special Markov properties, which are uh, relating to the fact that this is very much the backbone of the russo seymour walsh arguments. And typically uh, for other models like uh, Bargman, Fock, or um, um, other types of, you know, like monochromatic waves, uh, they don't have... Um, they don't satisfy the FKG inequality. So that very much makes um, a, a, a lot, a lot of the Bruce seymour Walsh arguments and those crossing probability estimates completely different. And that is one case in which for a completely different model in which um, you can only really establish structure about the Gaussian covariance of the model um, because you define the mean and the covariance because it's a Gaussian process, how this first property, um, we're very fortunate to have this first property for the six vertex model in Bruce seymour Welsh. And it also satisfies other types of conditions because um, for increasing functions, namely you take big F and big G from the set of all height functions which map into the reals, um, uh, Dumino Copan and uh, colleagues in their logarithmic delocalization of the height function paper established several types of conditions in which the FKG property can also hold for the expectation because the expectation is defined in terms of the six vertex probability measure under sufficiently flat boundary conditions. But we're also fortunate because um, these types of inequalities for FKG and CBC, they also hold under slow boundary conditions. And then also finally, under the CBC condition, the expectation the, the corresponding inequality for this property also holds an expectation. And the same set of properties that the six vertex measure satisfies from the previous slide also apply to the height value of the function, the absolute value of the height of the height function. So it's just given by that the inequalities are the same form. And then this is the exact inequalities that are given in which the absolute value of a height function is given from these uh, from these functions. And uh, we can move towards introducing the Ashkin Teller model because this is the paper that I had alluded to earlier from Klausman and Pled, in which it describes, as we had alluded to, several different regions of the phase diagram of the six vertex model. And uh, from 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 their reference, they describe in a very similar way the the potential uh, the sample space and uh, the probability of um, obtaining different configurations within the Ashton Teller sample space and how that can be established in direct correspondence with the six configurations which are given of the sample space of the six vertex model and ultimately how that can relate to some even some higher dimensional representation in the corresponding geometric properties of uh, you know of the Ashton Teller model and the triangular lattice which is also a model of interest but to begin our discussion of Ashkin Teller, keep in mind the following that this model is called mixed because spins are defined over odd faces or over even faces of the square lattice. And the collection of odd and even faces within uh, that are enclosed within a finite volume of, are dual to each other because we have an odd face next to an even face, next to an odd face, and next to an even face, and so on and so forth, given some counting or some ordering of all the faces which appear within a finite volume. And um, as we had been alluding to, uh, we're very fortunate in the case of the six vertex model as not in several other models of statistical mechanics to have that to have the property that the FKG inequality holds and under flat and slow boundary conditions and even other other types of boundary conditions. And it holds for the Ashkin Teller model, but it holds in a weaker form because the FKG inequality that holds for the six vertex model um, is uh, is uh, is not a marginalized uh, inequality, but the Ashkin Teller it, uh, FKG inequality is dependent upon the marginals of spin configurations only over the set of odd, odd faces or even faces at a time. So again, this is very much uh, highlighting some properties of the Ashton Teller model, which I didn't get to uh, in another type of presentation, which had discussed some general overview of the weakened crossing probability estimates. Because in fact, the weakened crossing probability estimates, it's much, it's, it's more nuanced and different because if we can only be sure that some type of marginalized set of conditions for these inequalities hold, then it's going to directly directly influence the types of faces and configurations and collections of faces that we can put together for establishing that some type of good crossing probability holds within the strip. 
And um, another really helpful reference is established from the Glasman and Polite paper that really clearly demonstrates how we sample a configuration from the Ashkin Teller model and how it relates to the height function representation of the standard six vertex model, which is introduced in the paper from Dumino Copan Carilla or Manolescu Carilla Onulomara, is given by the fact that um that the height function representation, which is given on the left can have either zero or one boundary conditions. And um, the this type of configuration, which is given in the Glasman and Palad paper, is given by the fact that um is given by the fact that this is consistent with the flat boundary conditions that's described in the simpler case of Russell Sumo Walsh and crossing probability estimates from the logarithmic delocalization of the height function paper. So it's really good because it's establishing in this paper from Glasman and Plett some type of correspondence of the six vertex model under nice tame boundary conditions and how that relates to some other type of model, but there's a different encoding of the boundary conditions as well as the different encoding of the gradient of the height function, namely how the height function would change from one face to another. And this is then going to, as we have been emphasizing as a novel topic of discussion in this in this shorter presentation is given by the fact that it can be also interpreted from a random geometric perspective because I didn't really discuss too much about the symmetric domains and what characteristics of the symmetric domains come into play and then how that can be related for more complicated models in higher dimensions of statistical mechanics. And as we had mentioned, uh, this is just given by the fact that there's a different encoding of the gradient or the change of the height function because in this topmost uh, six vertex uh, portion or row of the six vertex configuration, which we have in this slide, it's given by that the height function is alternating between increasing and decreasing by one, which just means that we have, because the height function has slope zero across the strip of the topmost part of the configuration that we're sampling under flat boundary conditions. Um, it's just it's just demonstrating that it's alternating between arrows which are just either pointing up or down and which alternate in opposing uh, di you know opposing orientations. But then this is different because from the encoding of the gradient of the height function of the uh, of the uh, Ashkin Teller model, um, it's all plus, despite the fact that the orientation uh, or the value of the height function is alternating between every face in the six vertex model side. And uh, we can more closely examine pieces of the finite volume uh, between the six vertex model and its mixed spin representation, because the mixed spin representation is referring to the types of configurations excuse me, the types of configurations of the Ashkin Teller model, which are given in which there's some distribution of plus and minus faces as labels instead of um, the images of the height function from the face homomorph or the, the, the homomorphism of faces over the square lattice. Uh, but my, but more formally, besides the pictorial representations of the Ashkin Teller model and its connections to the six vertex model, we introduce the following, which is given from this definition, which is exactly reproducing the definition that's provided in the Glasman Play paper, in which the Hamiltonian, which is used to define the probability measure, which is relating to the fact that the Ashkin Teller model can be uh, related to the construction from the coupling comp constants of coupling two POTS models together is uh, given by the fact that there are two two-point inter interactions between tau and tau prime respectively, as well as one four-point interaction between all of the terms of tau and all of the terms of tau prime at respectively at the lattice sites i and j over the square lattice. And from the Hamiltonian that's given on the previous slide, as we know it's very customary in this field, we can find the probability measure by the exponential minus the Hamiltonian normalized in the partition function of the finite volume, where the partition function is given as a function of several contributions at the sites i and j, namely tau of i, tau of j, tau prime i, tau prime j, tau prime j, as well as the finite volume. But as we have been mentioning, it just to emphasize and redirect our focus to before we get too optimistic about all these similarities between crossing probability estimates and Russell-Simmel-Walsh that we can apply for Ashkin-Teller, 
we have to, again, keep in mind that in comparison to the properties that are satisfied by the six vertex probability measure, as we had said a bit a, bit, a while ago in the presentation, um, the Ashkin-Teller measure only satisfies FKG on the marginals of spin configurations. And the previously mentioned property above, as a result, limits the types of crossing events that we can consider when formulating crossing probability estimates and hence weakens the RSW result that we can obtain from the model. So this is very much related to like some other types of weakening results of conditions that hold like for the inhomogeneous six vertex model, such as integrability and other very favorable properties, because when we pass to triangular ice, there can be weakening of these conditions, even though we could still make use of some type of similar version of an argument for studying the triangular ice um, from information that we can have on inhomogeneous uh, square ice. And as we had mentioned, the marginal properties are relating to FKG in that in the paper Glasman and Pled as th in theorem four of their work, um, they describe how the spin representation on some marginals of the spins sigma dot, which is just from, it can be either taken from the set of even or odd faces, satisfies the FKG lattice condition, and which is given by the spin of the product of two function is given by the product of one spin measure of times the product of another spin measure. But now I wanted to further progress and further build upon and extend upon our notions of the geometric qualities of the Ashkin Teller model, because the random geometric properties come from the fact that um, we can have the collection of even faces or odd faces. And uh, th these different types of uh, representations influence the characteristics of the symmetric domains and all the types of uh, properties that we would hope to establish and study further uh, for when we're looking at uh, weakening the crossing probability estimates from Russo Seymour Welsh and another instance for the Ashkin Teller model. So, this is given by the fact that we can denote these two sets, DO of AT and DI of AT, respectively, as a set of outer faces or inner faces, which is relating to the probability that some crossing prob that some crossing event would exist between some face of the square lattice over which is a which is the Ashkin uh, you know an individual face within an Ashkin Teller configuration that there would exist some plus and minus face so meaning that within some restriction of the finite volume that we're looking at the crossing probability estimates of whether that could exist whether that could happen with positive probability to some other face d prime d prime prime uh, which is relating to a face that's lying within the outer boundary of some symmetric domain uh, that's contained within the strips of, of the square lattice. And we can also define a type of analogous set, which is given by the set of interfaces of the Ashkin Teller model, which is again um, defined as the, prob the chance that with positive probability, there exists another crossing event over the face of uh, odd faces of the square lattice. So we have to be sure and like, you know, uh, establish um, that we can uh, we can only gather information from either the set of even faces or odd faces of uh, the square lattice when we're working with the marginalized um, uh, set of conditions that the Ashkin Teller model satisfies, which very much relates to the part in uh, in difficulties because um, when we could establish that Russo Seymour Walsh holds for either uh, slope boundary conditions or from the seminal original work due to Dumin no Kopan, uh, Minolescu, Corilla, and Ulamara, which established it for sufficiently flat boundary conditions. In this case, we have to work with different types of patterns and properties of the of the Ashkin Teller representation of the height function only over only uh, odd or even faces of the score lattice at a time. And uh, generally speaking, objects such as those introduced in the previous slide describe weakening of crossing probability estimates across long finite volumes that are required for Bruce Sumo Walsh theory, as we had mentioned. So we can just look at the fact that um, we can define the face of the even even um, uh, set of faces um, of the, over the square lattice as given by the fact that um, we can associate some type of symmetric domain uh, from the Ashkin Teller model, um, which is given by the fact that we have a left boundary and a right boundary of the symmetric domain um, in which there's strictly positive probability that there exists some crossing event uh, between uh, 
these two intervals uh, from the square lattice, uh, which would communicate some type of information and favorable properties about these symmetric domains that we can use for crossing probability estimates. But as we had mentioned, there's also another type of crossing probability estimates because we also have to associate, as we had mentioned, um, as characteristics, as geometric characteristics of the six vertex model under slope boundary conditions, that there can exist um, some faces of the square lattice that can freeze depending upon um, the types of boundary conditions that we choose and how this has connections with um, elements of the interior of um, a certain a set of um, sort of a, a certain set of rationals. And um, so for the for the Ashkin Taylor model, we can define some representation for the freezing clusters or what we call as the collection of frozen faces uh, from that are frozen uh, from the six vertex model. And the representation of these frozen faces and these collections of frozen faces that faces that appear in the six vertex model and the Ashkin Taylor model can be phrased as some type of um, some type of uh, different components of crossing probabilities between the left boundary and also the right boundary and other components of the symmetric domain, which can then be used to establish that some type of notion of crossing probability estimates holds with the um, with the uh, with respect to the marginalized uh, set of conditions of the Ashkin Teller model. And um, as we had mentioned, I think that uh, now at this point uh, we further developed upon several notions of random geometry and how that relates to some parts of so, uh, several aspects in some parts of the argument that are used for the Ashkin Teller model and how this can ultimately relate to the properties of the high function of the six vertex model, namely that it logarithmically delocalizes. And this is given by the fact that we can recall the frozen boundary configuration that I deliberately put a lot earlier on in the presentation so that this theme of random geometry and how uh, looking at crossing probability estimates and the dependence of such estimates on the um, on the boundary conditions can be established and realized under narrower sets of conditions for other types of models and how that very much relates to uh, some uh, some type of overview of these methods. And uh, the admissible boundary conditions, like we had mentioned for the marginalized Ashkin Teller me measure, can also relate, as we had mentioned, to open boundary conditions, such as the open boundary conditions, which are looked for either the lower rank or the higher rank versions of the quantum spin chain, uh, whose sample space of 38 configurations is given here. And the concluding remarks that we have is that we introduced six vertex as well as the lower and higher rank quantum spin chains. And we discuss more details for weekend crossing probability estimates for the Ashkin Teller model, in which in the other presentation that I had given a while ago, we looked at several more narrow and general characteristics of the crossing probability estimates. But in this case, from these, from this presentation, uh, we really delve more into the properties of the symmetric domains and how it relates to even some symmetry in the boundary conditions, which is established in the six vertex model side, which can be also um, established and verified, you know, and realized in some way as a symmetry of the probability measure in the boundary conditions for the Ashkin Teller model. And this is important because the fact that um, the, some crossing probability estimates hold for the Ashkin Teller model holds under specified admissible boundary conditions, which despite the fact that these allow for different types of arguments, still nevertheless help us carry over some types of notions, which is generate, which is demonstrating the robustness of these type of Russo Seymour Welsh arguments. And we motivated RSW for more of a geometric perspective through discussions of the symmetric domains and several qualities of such domains, which is very much different from the uh, from the previous perspective that was a more general overview of the weak and crossing probability estimates. And it also has consequences for the random geometry of, say, the 20 vertex model. And finally, we alluded to similarities of the RSW arguments for the dilute POTS model, which has the high temperature expansion of the loop and ON model was studied um, in my first preprint for uh, russo Simo washing quadricotomy of crossing probabilities a couple of years ago. And uh, thanks for watching.